Right. Well, a very, very warm uh, welcome to those of you in the room and those online and joining us today. I'm really delighted to be chairing this session. We've got two excellent presentations and I'm going to hand over to Paulette Matepeace, uh, who is Head of Digital Capability at JISC, to introduce our session, um, which is co-presenting with Kaylee Hunt, who is EdTech Coordinator and Senior Tutor at the wonderful National Star College. So I'm going to hand over to Paulette. Thank you, Sarah. So just a warm welcome, Kaylee. It really is a warm welcome at this moment in time. I think it's probably about 28 degrees out there. And um, we're really, really excited that you have come to share how you found the digital elevation tool a real real help within the college and your college is quite special and I think you deal with very special people there as well and I no doubt as we have your presentation we're going to learn a little bit more about it so thank you and the floor is yours thank you for having me so just a little bit of background um, about myself so I've been at National Star for 16 years um, and as Paulette was saying, that I'm the EdTech Coordinator of Senior Tutors. So I have quite a split sort of role. Um, I was actually going to ask the audience sort of where you were, where you sort of sit, if you're educators, lecturers, or if you're in other sort of establishments. But I think the majority that are in here now are from JISC. So thank you for your support. Um, National Star recently has been engaging with the digital elevation tool. And I'm going to sort of talk about that a little bit going forward. My background has been within FE for the last 16 years, and I've moved from being a teacher in the classroom, looking at the frustrations with technology, looking at the frustrations in terms of how do I get what I want in my classroom, up to our leadership teams to talk about where we're gonna go in the future and being able to inform some of those decisions. So National Star is an independent specialist provider. We have got about 180 students, some of them are residential, um, and then we've got about 60 day learners that are with us as well. So there's quite a different dynamic that we have to cater for. Because it is residential, we have to look at that 24-hour waking curriculum. So access to technology is really core to that, and being able to make those decisions has sort of been fundamental in engaging with this tool going forward. Um, the college does work with young people with disabilities and associated difficulties. So the technology often requires working with our assistive technologists as well um, to adapt a lot of the equipment. The picture that I've got up on the PowerPoint at the moment is one of our learners that actually uses switches and he's been sort of learning to engage using sort of eye gaze technology and building towards independence or a greater level of independence. Uh, this young man has actually been learning to drive which wouldn't have been possible previously. Um, and we've been working with our occupational therapists because we're quite lucky we have that in-house. Um, we have our assistive technologists. If it's gone to IST at the end, we tend to have it in-house. So we're very, very privileged in terms of where we come from and being able to talk. But what we are welcoming is the opportunity for people to come to us, collaborate with us. And I'm gonna talk about that partnership that we have with JISC where we've been able to work together and take things further. So, this video should start. I think one of the best parts about that video is that Anna was actually able to say using her eyes at the end it was easy peasy lemon squeezy and it was hilarious at the time during the filming because Hannah at the beginning was really not very comfortable with learning to drive she quite enjoyed having the comfort of a one-to-one -one that was dedicated and with her 
and it was quite scary to be independent to be able to control her own wheelchair what it is doing is giving her options going forward where the college is able to go right because we've identified this young person needs this technology we need people in place in roles to be able to support her going forward and it isn't just going to be an assistive technologist it's going to be people that are looking for innovations that are going to have to work with external companies and that sort of brings us back to where the digital elevation tool sort of identifies where you are currently and it then talks about how you're going to make those next steps your transitions to being in the stages of elevate and transform um, that video has a lot of sort of messages in there in terms of technology and where we're able to go with things the room is full of technologists so i don't need to sort of scream about how good technology is however what i will say is that without the student being at the heart of everything a lot of this doesn't really happen doesn't have a lot of purpose so i will always celebrate the student choosing what they want for technology and therefore it's shaping what it is we are then engaging and doing with others so the digital elevation tool it's probably only appropriate i really talk about how it actually works um, so there is the self-assessment at the beginning. Um, it's really important at this stage to be honest as to where you are. When I did this, I originally sold it to my senior leadership team and said, right, I'm going to use some of you as part of this. Now, if you don't know the answer to this, it's not a test. Um, I talked to them at the time. There was a film that came out called Maverick. And people at the time in our place weren't that keen on moving technology forward or certainly spending money towards technology. This gave me an in to start talking about how can I use this tool that we were able to engage with to benchmark us, provide data and actually say, this is where we're at. This is where we want to be. This is where you're going to tell me you want us to be and being able to give them that information. I did use it using Maverick, because I talked about AI with Val Kilmer, not actually being able to speak and AI composing his words so he could contribute back into that film. And I had their attention at that point and technology became everybody's friend in the room and we didn't have anybody that was adverse to technology. It then meant we could move into the next phase where we started building an action plan as a team. I was then able to start bringing in a team. It meant I was able to also confirm my role it meant my role had a purpose and it meant I was starting to build what people are calling a digital strategy. I was able to start going, right, this is where we're at. This is where we want to go. And that moved us into how we were going to advance our organisation. I know on here it says college and we've got an audience of some universities. It isn't just limited to colleges. For us, having that action plan and knowing where we were going to go then did create roles. It also meant other people's roles needed to adapt to fit where we were going to be going. The trendy word agile is used quite often with this. However, um, Andrew did write the Agile College, and I would encourage you to read that piece where this digital elevation tool actually sits really well with it and it helps your college move or your organization move into that agile phase. Um, it was something that for us had a tremendous impact, and that's probably why I'm here talking about it today, because it meant we were able to make decisions based on recommendations, based on what others were doing. We were able to compare with others. We, we had scales against other schools and colleges that we knew had used it within the community that we were able to talk to and actually say, we're interested in this because how have you done this? We're really struggling with this. Or do you know what? We're actually really good at this. You could do it this way. And that community learning became incredibly powerful with this tool. So, I've talked about the senior leadership team. It also influenced the culture, not in terms of the whole organizational culture, because we've always had quite a proactive view around assistive technology. It changed the organization culture of change and moving forward. Everybody here has talked about the pandemic and the changes that happened there. For us, we haven't seen a lot of uh, the looking back. Everything is still luckily going forward. But I think that's a lot to do with the DET tool because we've got a plan going forward. It, it is step by step. It is reliant on me and others that I've asked to, to keep going back and checking where we are. But that's good because it does mean I've got a benchmark every time that I do it. And therefore I've got a way of reporting something without doing a finger in the wind guess or going, oh, look, there's some shiny new tech and nobody's using it. I haven't actually ended up having any tech that's come in that we haven't then used because of this. There's been a better uh, case study 
or there's been a better purpose behind that tech thanks to this. Um, we have got a digital strategy and I will say I've probably ripped it up maybe three or four times because it is agile, it's had to be. And anybody who says to me, oh, yeah, I wrote it in 2017 or I wrote it in 2022, if you're not looking at it all the time, I would say it's out of date already. So ours is a live working document and it is something that I would say I'm probably visiting once a week in my role. Um, I couldn't speak for our leaders, um, but it's something that I certainly report against all the time. And those facts and figures that go forward that inform our self area assessments towards the end of the year are also contributed towards it. Uh, I would say there's been a change for our staff and students. Our staff are now aware that we have an area and a team of people that are technology focused and that want to bring things forward. We're starting to do more with others um, and we're starting to be able to uh, stand out as an expert and be able to say we are an expert in this field because and it's been backed up by what it is that we're doing but it's it's having the data to also prove that it's successful and it's been a good step I've talked lots and lots about data but I don't want to say too much more on it other than it does give you lots to look at it does give you the distance traveled um, and it's something that we also used in our recent Ofsted inspection so that was great Okay, so where we're sort of going with it, I've talked about the community group that we're part of. I would really encourage everybody to use this and get involved within the community group. There's as much learning to take from the community as there is from actually using the tool. Um, a lot of things that I've done within the community has then involved Teams meetings, Teams messages, where we've collaborated about our digital strategies. We've talked about how, who did you get to write it within your organization? Who is responsible for keep looking at this document that could become quite quickly very onerous if you aren't looking at it in the correct way? Um, it has given us steps and recommendations that then have impacted other strategies that we've written. Um, so actually it isn't just a standalone document um, and it continues to give us those reports uh, that we're able to review. I did put this one at the bottom, a little bit contentious. It is a persuasive tool as well. I found that when we have had an area within the college that has perhaps been funded quite heavily recently, and then the attention moves to another area, say a new build happens, we've just had a new assessment suite built, that other area that was perhaps in the limelight, then perhaps doesn't have all of those things. And it's very difficult to maintain keeping that attention as a whole. So what we have been trying to do is always reflect it back to the DET tool about where that area has been working, where this new area has come on board and how do we maintain those other. And because it's a benchmarking tool, I can take it right back to the very beginning and just make sure that we're still maintaining that rather than going back to where we don't want to be, that we are always taking that next step. So this is some pictures of some of the recent things that we've been involved in. We've got quite involved in esports recently. Um, it's become something we don't have a specific course around esports, um, but it's meant that we've been able to champion our students. They've been on the BBC in the top picture. Um, the one in the bottom where one of my students is holding up his teddy bear. Uh, they went to a tournament. They played against able bodied people in esports so they were using adaptive controllers but the people who they were playing against didn't know they were on the level playing field and that in specialist education is rare where you can be on the same playing field as somebody who's able-bodied admittedly my team did lose but that also gave us another learning opportunity but it was good you could see how much this young person really enjoyed it in there um, on in the picture on your far right is some wearable technology We've been looking at, uh, it's called a molly suit with a young person. So it's about stimulation of muscles to help reduce involuntary movement, to help movement. So with feeding, if there's additional shaking. But this DET tool has given us the opportunity to be able to start looking at this. So this is involved our physiotherapists and our occupational therapists. So as you can see, everybody in the picture is smiling. Technology is improving lives here. Okay. So we have a commitment to technology now. So this is um, one of the students again in the Molly suit in a walking frame. He has a, um, a vision, to, he's getting married first of all, I should probably give you that context. He has a vision to walk down the aisle. He is a uh, power chair user. So he's independent around college, can drive himself, but he wants to walk. 
He wants to be able to have that muscle strength to be able to walk. This is where we're hoping to get him towards it. The, the QR code that I've included on the end includes some other videos. Would encourage you to look at those. It's just a playlist of some of the assistive technology that we've sort of been working on, things that we would like to invite you to collaborate with us on. Uh, going forward, if you think we can improve, come and chat to us, let us know. We are open both directions. Um, in some other news, we have recently, in some sad news, lost our previous um, principal, Catherine Rudd. Um, she worked for us for 16 years. Uh, brilliant, brilliant principal. Um, had students and technology sort of at the heart of what she was trying to do as our leader. Um, she went on to go and work at Ofsted as one of um, His Majesty's senior inspectors. However, part of her legacy, she has invited people to um, contribute to technology at National Star College. So she has made a, it's called the Catherine Rudd uh, Opportunity Fund. Um, so the money that is donated through that will then lead to being spent on technology that will then directly impact our our young people at all of our sites and not just the Cheltenham site but the ones across the country we also have sites in Wales so I would encourage you to have a look at that if you know anybody that would like to contribute even if it's collaboration we're very welcome to those things but I can't stress enough the digital elevation tool got us on the track with a lot of these things and it's certainly something that we will keep revisiting as hopefully technology at National Star grows and we can impact more and share with others thank you very much Hayley, thank you. That was really inspirational. And having visited the college many years ago, I absolutely can see the value that uh, technology has been having and how that journey has evolved. Um, we have got time, I think, for uh, one or two questions. I've got some, but I'll open it up to the floor first. Becky. Any um it's a very so good I'll question. Just repeat the question yeah. just for our online um, listeners. So the question was, did you have any uh, staff that were perhaps a bit more resistant to using the DET tool? And if so, how did you overcome that? Great question. We did. And I, I saw it coming quite early on. So actually what I did was I invited person X who was going to be filling it out in that, uh, the different sections within there to sit with me at the time. I was the data inputter. I was the one also reading the questions. So if they didn't understand some of the language that was in there, because I have the technology background, I was able to explain. But if it was obvious they didn't understand, it went into the don't know. We clearly needed to work on it. There were times when we were looking um, at the tool and there's an option of not started yet or not a priority that actually that meant people had to make decisions. And sometimes when you're perhaps sat with a leader and they're put in that position, they have to make that decision there and then. So it can become uncomfortable, but it's something that needs to be done because those decisions are really important to make. And it really does give you the absolute truth when it comes out with benchmarking at the end. So yes, there were difficult questions, um, but they were welcomed when they had the feedback at the end of, yeah, I really wasn't aware that we needed to improve this. It really highlighted maybe some complacencies, perhaps that we didn't know we had. And I think that that's good in any organization to really delve into the, yeah, we're great at this. No, according to this, we need to improve. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's. So I've got a question for you and I will do the loud voice so that Sarah doesn't have to repeat. No, I'll go quieter. So the digital elevation tool has got five key themes. Yeah. Um, it can be quite daunting when you're starting out. Is there one theme that you picked on to start with? Where, where was your starting point? And, and, and the question is, why did you choose that? Uh, I went with the underpinning technologies initially because that was where I wanted to know the home trees. So at the time I was in a seconded position, I was working as an EdTech demonstrator on the EdTech demonstrator program, partnered with 
the heart of Worcestershire College. So it meant we were quite new into the whole field of technology externally. We'd always looked internally rather than as to what other people were doing. So starting in tech, I went with the easiest option, first of all, to build my confidence when I was perhaps going to be sitting with our then CEO at the time or others within the organization to go, tell me what you think we're like in technology against these criteria. So I went with the easiest first for confidence. Didn't perhaps get that initially. Um, it was more of a, um, I needed to know more about what it is that I wanted to achieve whilst doing it. And it, I then changed it for when I asked the next person, of, right, tell me what your goals are based on this. Where do you want, where do you think we are? Where do you want to be? And then use that to answer against. And it, it helped people have more of a focus when they were answering their questions. Now, all of their questions, because I was sat with them, meant that they weren't just choosing the boxes to select. They were actually giving me insights and examples because they're educators of where they felt that was. And it became a discussion that was incredibly healthy. And it meant technology was being discussed by everybody. It was a real sort of buzz at the time that I'm smiling about it because I clearly enjoyed that, that opportunity. So I get this out every now and then when I think technology needs another boost as well as using it as the reporting. Are there any other questions? I've got I've got a question, Kelly. Yeah. So when would you see yourself revisiting those questions and, and redoing that? Because obviously you've mentioned it's a good baseline of where you're at, but then you've also got the evidence, haven't you, when you do it again of yeah. just how far you've you've moved. So any ideas yet when because I recognize it's a big commitment isn't it that works it is that, a big but... commitment so I was setting myself to go through two topics every mm -hmm. half term right um with a view to making sure that I was talking to different people within that area so if I had targeted talking to our senior leadership team I was then going and talking to our therapy team the next time so I was getting differing perspectives mm -hmm. and looking at how the impact of those leadership mm -hmm. decisions were being impacted into everyday mm -hmm. use of that technology or the decisions that have been made mm -hmm. going forward. So I've tried to make it go across. Um, there was no rules in there, so it can be completely bespoke. Um, and I would encourage that because mm -hmm. everybody's gonna use this differently. I just think you've got to use it to know where to start with it really. Well, if you can join me in just thanking Kenny, that was an excellent presentation and really excited, I think, to see how your journey continues and further sharing of practice, which I know we'll be doing. So thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you Paulette.